Now, moving on. You have other films. <laughs> we spent a good amount of time talking about the one that made you make this transition from sports journalist writer and or and writer, radio host. Uh, you said you did TV. There's no proof of that, so I don't know. Um, but now you're going to walk into your uh, second film. Uh, you care to share what that's about? Sure. You wanna... Well, it's about the Wichita Wings, the 1980s dynasty of indoor soccer. I know nothing uh, about this in Wichita. I okay. don't know much either. Um, <laughs> I'm learning along the way. Uh, but... You know, we're we're we've gotten involved with a couple of uh, local authors. They wrote a book on it, and, and they're they're they literally wrote the book on the Wichita Wings, um, and they are our producers, and we're using that book as kind of a blueprint for our film. Um, I don't know, Adam. We're... Well, yeah, as the only one at this table who uh, has attended a Wings game. Okay. Or is old enough to remember the 1980s Wichita Wings? Probably accurate. <laughs> um, Dallas had a team. Did you know that? Uh, uh, what uh, an indoor soccer, soccer team? team? Yeah, Dallas Burn. Okay. All right. So. Oh no, Dallas Sidekicks. Was the sidekicks. Mm -hmm. Right. That was the indoor. Um, it was tattoo. just. It was just. Yeah, tattoo. Who later played for the Wichita Wings. Oh, really? Sure did. See, I know a little something. Yeah. Tiny Oops. little guy. Yeah, but he's great. He was player coach, I think. Yeah. Face. Didn't know he was coach. Oh, okay. And well, I, let me tell you, you something can... about the Dallas sidekick. We'll let you go. Well, I'll let you take the stand first. All right. I can't tell if he's BSing or not. I uh, um, probably am. <laughs> The wings were just such a phenomenon that really only could flourish in the '80s. Um, you know, it had, it had. I, you know, my working title for it. I don't think anyone else is crazy about this. Is uh, sex violence in the Wichita Wings? Awful. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. Um, just because the sex appeal was a huge part of the wings. Oh, you These said guys, six. Yeah. I thought you said like sex. I thought, I, no, sex. Okay. Sex. Six. Give me the title again. Sex, violence, and the Wichita Wings. Love it. Run with it. Really? Go. Okay. Um, these guys were kind of sex symbols, and most of them were from Europe. They had the little short shorts. Uh, they had tan, oiled up legs. They had pretty hair, and... Um, the women in this town loved the Wichita Wings. Some, some of them loved them more than others. Um, in addition to that, you had the Wichita Angels, who were Wichita's version of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Mm, um, okay. Who we were just, we just had a little reunion for them, uh, four of them, um, the other night. Uh, filmed it, of course. But it was such. Adam, reframe that. What do you mean? Why? You make it sound, you already, you, that you had a reunion with the uh, we, <laughs> Wichita Wings and you filmed it. The the Angels. Angels. Well, we just, we had them, they, they were looking at their old cheerleading costumes. Okay. They were laughing about, you know, memories. Um, now, did they, did they hold up well? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're still getting it done. All right. Need a second um, uh, camera. My chin just hit the mic, by You're the fine? way. That's pretty. Am, that's an amateur mis mistake. Mm. Um, He's done radio before. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, Mike Romalis had this video, one of the producers, um, had this video of all these old cheesy fashion shows and Kaleidoscope. For those of you old enough to remember Kaleidoscope mm -hmm. with, uh, I think, Mogi Langston and uh, Gene Rump. Uh, it's just... The film is going to be just a lot of fun to watch and I think almost as fun to make um, just because, you know, as Andy Chapman said, he, you know, it's his opinion that the 1980s were the greatest decade that ever existed. Now, I lived through the 80s and I was in my preteens and teens and, you know, I thought it kind of sucked. What? I couldn't, I couldn't drink beer. Oh. I couldn't 
you know, I, I couldn't see him. Is the what, reason why he didn't like the '80s? Oh, well, I guess. Yeah, I enjoyed that. It was a it was a good time to grow Robo-Cop, up. RoboCop, Back to the Future. I just watched the original RoboCop. It was awful, isn't it? It didn't hold up. I bought <laughs> RoboCop on Blu-ray. The humor holds up. The humor holds up. But I gotta, I gotta say, I, I was, I was a. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard more old man jokes today. Well, I mean, you have no idea. It's, it's a part of life. Anyway, that's our movie. What, what other questions you got? <laughs> um, well, this one is for Kenny, actually. Um, now you shot, uh, you you shot all of out here in Kansas. Uh, a lot of it. Yeah, we, we had a lot of um, historical footage from the games. Um, in terms of new footage. John uh, John Pick uh-huh. is was one of our photographers. He actually, um, well, he him and Adam were working on the project before I was involved, and John was originally shooting it. Um, when I came in, I originally was just going to be the editor. Mm-hmm. Um, John was having some health issues and, and had to back out, so I, I kind of took the lead on that. Uh, that's that's why I was uh, that's why I'm uncomfortable with the the DP the director of photography title because mm. I just came on as as a, originally as a support camera guy and ended up doing a lot more of it than originally planned. So are you planning to be? I mean, are you the DP in this case for the uh, sex drugs yeah, and I, wings? Yeah, well, I didn't. I'd, okay, <laughs> so with with documentary, I feel that the DP title isn't as necessary. Um, well, are you shooting it? Is probably yeah. I'm that. shooting it. All right. So shooting it. I mean, I, I imagine just thinking about what we. Um, uh, 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 is it going to be more of how um, out here looks in terms of how it's shot, or are you experimenting with a new type of uh, a different technique? Yeah, we're definitely trying some new stuff. Um, okay, so you know one. I, an industry term for you with doc, I know you're familiar with with documentary and uh, with documentary terms but uh, b-roll you know you you have mm-hmm. to b-roll is, is considered your the visual footage that helps you tell a documentary story otherwise you are limited with just interviews right, right. Um, so some of the b-roll that I have in mind um, we want to recreate an 80s style music video and so we went back and watched a bunch of classic. 80s music videos and took inspiration from those. Which ones? Uh, Gotta say, which see, ones? simply irresistible. Once uh, in a lifetime. They're going some Huey, Huey Lewis in the news. No, no, no Huey uh-huh. Lewis. Um, Did, uh, Tom Petty jamming me. Yeah. Mm. Did, uh, Little Hall Oats. Uh, wait, wait. What kind of video are we uh, making? You're, What's you're like soft? The one with the like the sweatbands that are money for nothing. Money for straight. nothing. All right. Robert Palmer. Okay. So we're taking that as inspiration. Old. Go ahead. And um, <laughs> and we're we're making our own video out of it now. I, okay. How does that fit in the overall film? Um, I'm. This this is completely theoretical and experimental at this point. But my idea for how the film is going to edit together is I want it to feel like a VHS tape that the entire family records on. I don't know if you remember the 80s, but if, you know, grandma had a show that she wanted to watch. Yeah. She'd record her show. You'd record your show. And and the experience of watching that tape, the tracking would get all messed up mm-hmm. in between yeah, yeah, programs. Yeah. And, and maybe, you know, you had your copy of, of Back to the Future and, you know, a uh, news recording is, is right in the middle of it. Okay. So, so it just kind of would jump in, kind of a little sneaky... Uh sneaky uh i don't know you just kind of kind of like a uh like you say you you were recording jeopardy you know she got about a, no she got a soap opera and then jeopardy all of a sudden was on there because someone used to record jeopardy and it just bounced right back into exactly all right all yep, right exactly Spoiler alert. so that's my transition concept so as we're moving from point to point through now uh, will, the, will the whole are we are we still doing widescreen are we I, that is up still up to debate i think that a little bit of four by three aspect ratio the square aspect ratio would be appropriate maybe not necessarily for the entire thing 
I think if the entire documentary had the weird tracking, people wouldn't want to watch it. But if there's if it's peppered in there throughout, it's mm. going to be kind of cool and fun. And Well, we're going to jump out. I don't want to create no spoilers, give away no ideas here. So we'll go back to the story of... Uh, no, that's that's okay. I We... Um you were talking about dp we've, we've never been too hung up on on titles or anything like that but uh but uh kenny and i are actually the co-directors of this one so um i used to have the final say so now i guess it's shared it was shared then you just didn't know it. yeah that's true <laughs> that's true but anyway we're, we're co-directors and um three producers right now so uh but what's your target do you i mean how far along are you in this now um well we've <laughs> I mean we've we've shot several interviews. It's gonna be faster than out here in Kansas. It, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you know how it goes. You 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 kinda decide, oh, you know, we need to this. We need to make a trip to Detroit. We need to make a trip to England. And um but I do feel I we're definitely further along in the process. Um done several interviews we hope to get most of the shooting done by the end of the summer and then um you know get going on the the fun stuff 